Hello and welcome back to coverage of Washington, uh, Grand Prix Washington DC. Marshall Sutcliffe in the booth with Ben Swartz and we have round 15 coverage for you here. This is a win and in. This is for top eight right now. Sam Black sitting at ranked number 10th on the top 25 Magic Pro rankings versus Ben Kettle. Both players have made it to 12 and two at this, uh, by the end of this tournament here and the winner of this match will advance to the top eight. The loser is out. Players looking at their opening hands. Sam, we saw a little bit of earlier, he is on the Bant deck. Ben Kettle looks to be on Elves. So, pretty exciting match. And Elves starts off with Elanor Elves, sort of the de facto Elf over the years. Uh, a similar card though for Sam Black in Noble Hierarch adds a lot <clears throat> more to the table as far as uh, different mana colors has exalted, but this is going to be an important turn here for Ben Kettle as uh, he wants to really start getting things moving forward in his direction. And he's going to kick it off with a Green Sun Zenith for one. And he gets a Deathrite Shaman right away. <laughs> Deathrite Shaman is an elf, gets play in many different decks in Legacy. So, Ben here looking to set up his combo on the, the following turn. Let's talk a little bit about the decks that these players are playing. Uh, elves for, for Ben Kettle, we just mentioned that. On Sam Black's side, he's playing well, Reed Duke's list is kind of what people call it here. It's a, it's a Bant colored deck. Four true name nemesis in his deck. The breakout card of the weekend, I'd say, in Legacy. Stoneforge Mystic comes down on turn two for Sam Black. He's going to search through his deck. He's got Batter Skull. He's got Sur uh, uh, Umazawa's Jite. Calmly, calmly finds his Umazawa's Jite, which is really just a backbreaker in this particular matchup. Yeah, Umazawa's Jite, obviously, just absurd. He equips it to a creature and deals damage. Can slowly, actually quickly, pick mm -hmm. off all of the elves on Ben Kettle's side. If Sam Black can get that online quickly enough, he can do it before Ben has a, the chance to combo off with his elves deck. So Ben Kettle knows what he's up against here. He knows that Jitte's in hand, and he knows that that's going to make it so that it's going to force him to try to go off and secure this victory as soon as possible. Being on the play is going to be huge for him here. He has a Heritage Druid in hand. He's got Crater Hoof Behemoth and a Natural Order. I see a Glimpse of Nature as well. Looks like he's going to start off with that Glimpse of Nature and start to, to combo here. Yeah, looks like it. Heritage Druid. All right, this is going to give him access to a lot more mana. He's going to get to draw a card here, potentially. But it looks like Sam Black's actually thinking here. So he'll get to draw the card regardless of whether or not Heritage Druid resolves. Sam's but considering whether or not he wants to use that Surge Supply Shares in his hand. He's also, he also has a Daze in his hand, too. Yeah. So. I'm, I'm one of those other creatures, though. I mean, it has about the same effect, right? OK. Uh, he, can do, he can do both. But he can pay for the days with the Llanowar Elves. Oh, yeah, right. Are there any lands and graveyards right now as well for the Deathrite Shaman? Well, Sam's going to daze here. I think there might be a single one from Ben. Okay. But this is going to tap the Llanowar Elves and mean that he can't use it with the Heritage Druid. Uh, though it will resolve, and the trigger will resolve. And he draws kind of a, a miserable card for him, a second yeah. Crater Hoof in hand. Not really what he wanted to see. Unable to continue casting creature spells and drawing cards here. That's right. And he's just forced to pass the turn back, so Sam Black's got to feel pretty decent about that. He's got a couple of wastelands in hand. Yeah, and if he can get this Cheetah online soon. can start picking away at Ben's creatures, make it much harder for him to 
make something matter. Taking a look at Ben's list, I'm seeing if he might have a progenitus in the main deck. Does not look like he does. His big creatures to get with natural order, crater hoof behemoths, and then after that, combo pieces. How many crater hoofs? Two? Just two. So are those... So the natural orders are only going to be able to find like other combo pieces at this point? No, no big yeah, hitting things there's like that? no regal force. Okay. Progenitus in the sideboard. A Rurikthar in the sideboard as well. Oh, interesting. All right, Windswept Teeth goes away. Sam Black replayed his uh, Tropical Island and just passed a turn. So Sam, I think, here is in a pretty good position. It's he hard to say from his side, Yeah, right? he doesn't know whether or not Ben has yeah. good stuff in his hand, but he's got to imagine Ben passed the, that turn with Glimpse up with multiple mana left. He had one mana available from the Deathrite Shaman, one mana available from the Bayou. Just didn't do anything, right? So That's if you're right. in Sam's seed, all of the spells that, like creatures that Ben wants to cast are going to be one or two mana, so you could have cast any of them if he had it. Wow, pretty good draw there for Ben, though. He, he draws an Elvish Visionary. He, he doesn't have any way to, to keep drawing cards, and the Visionary can start at least to try to chain a few things together here. Yeah, so he's going to cast that Visionary. Hope to draw something good. Green Sun Zenith. Green Sun Zenith, so moving right along. He could even Zenith for another Visionary here if he wanted. Probably going kind to of Zenith for Wirewood Symbiote. Okay, and start to try to go off with the uh, Symbiote and the Visionary. Yeah, draw at least another card and see what he, where he can go from there. Yep, I mean, there he knows is. that the Jitae is incoming, so yes. it's possible that he wants to get something to, to deal with that at a later point. Unfortunately, he doesn't have Crisali Pride Mage in his main deck. That would have been the go-to, keep Pride Mage up when he passed the turn. But with that in his main deck, the only option he has is uh, Viridian Shaman. Can't really fetch that guy up at instant speed. So. so he could lose a big chunk of his board before it really mattered? Yeah. Or lose the most important parts of his board, the Symbiote and the, the Heritage the Druid. Heritage Druid, okay. Sam's going to drop down to 16, crack his fetch land, and presumably put that equipment into play. Yeah, if you're Sam here, you've got to be pretty happy here. There it is. Sword to Plowshares. Still has enough mana, though, to make his, uh, his Jitte appear, and he does just that. Okay. So Sam looking to be in good position. He actually draws Jace the Mind Sculptor here, which is interesting, but he's got to just prioritize getting that Jitte and some counters on it, right? Yeah. Okay. Equip. So that way he can take out the important creatures. Like, uh -huh. And he sends it right in there. And yeah, so Ben just takes it. There'll be two counters on Jite. Sam's likely going to pick off the Heritage Druid and, and either the Visionary or the Land of War Elves, mm -hmm. would be my guess. Yeah, the Deathrite Shaman's a problem going down the line, but not as much of an immediate issue. Yeah, it's just like. You'd rather get two cards with your GTA counters yeah. than, than a single one. So yeah, Landwar Elf says goodbye. Goodbye, Heritage Druid. Sam's gonna play another land and take out the Bayou with that Wasteland. And Ben's just really in trouble here. I think Sam Black is, Black is going to Green Sun Zenith for a Dryad Arbor here. Yep. Keep his mana development moving forward. At this point, Sam's just looking to close out the game pretty quickly. That GTA Online means that it's going to be really tough for Ben to amount any, any amount of an army. Yeah, he's in a horrible position now. 
nothing much he could have done, I don't think, but that Umazawa's Jitte is going to absolutely dominate this board for as long as it's sitting there. Sam got that Dryad Arbor because gives him access to four mana. He's got a uh, Chase the Mind Sculptor in his hand. So you can add insult to injury. Kettle looking for anything here to take down Black. But unless he's able to somehow piece together a ton of mana and cast just straight up the Crater Hoof Behemoth, I don't see how he'll be able to get out of this. Okay. So Kettle's going to natural order right now, probably for Viridian Shaman to take out the Jitte and give himself a chance to get back in this, I'm assuming. Yep. Sam doesn't have a response to this, and Shaman's going to come down. Uh -huh. Goodbye, Mr. Jitte. But even but now... It's really done the damage, right? Yeah. Just taking out those two important creatures. Ben's hand was already pretty bad with uh, two Crater Hoofs and yeah, all. Yeah, that's all he's got. And now Sam can just play Jite, or sorry, uh, chase the Mind Sculptor and just start gaining massive advantage going into the, the mid to late game here. He draws a Green Sun Zenith. He has another Wasteland in hand as well. Has the Jace the Mind Sculptor, has the mana to cast it. Yep. Starts things off with a little attack from the uh, Stoneforge Mystic here. It's going to be two damage thanks to the Exalted. Oh, Sam peeled a Green Sun Zenith. Mm -hmm. He's going to cast that for two. Probably go get a Pride Mage or a Scavenging Ooze. Yeah, Scavenging, Scavenging Ooze, Ooze it is. Can start using that to make this gigantic beast clear out whatever's in the way with Chase the Mind Sculptor and close out this game quickly. All right, Ben Kettle up against the wall here, pretty hardcore, though has stemmed the bleeding a bit by getting that Umazawa's Jite off the battlefield so that he can at least try to rebuild. The downside for him is that he's got two cards in his hand that he almost never wants in his hand. He's got two Crater Hoof Behemoth, really designed to be natural orders for. Of course, his deck can make enough mana to just hard cast it, so that does happen too, but he's not really in a position for that to happen right now. Nice. Sam, and Sam Black has some pressure going with the scavenging news. He'll be able to gain back some life and just really, yeah, chase the Mind Sculptor. I hope this was fun for Ben Kettle. And here's the Brainstorm. So this is where it starts getting out of control. He has True Name Nemesis, Land, and Kasali Pride Mage off of Jace the Mind Sculptor. So pretty good stuff there. True Name Nemesis can... Increase the clock significantly starting next turn if, if Sam wants it to. Pride Mage can help a little bit even this turn. Attacking again with that Stoneforge Mystic. Ben trying to do something here. He's going to remove the sorts of plowshares from Sam Black's graveyard using his Deathrite Shaman. Drain Sam for two. Looks like he's found a Wirewood Symbiote, which actually isn't all that bad. He's not too far away with that Gaia's Cradle in his hand from just straight up casting 
creator of Behemoth. And because he's been pecking away at Sam's life total, he's pretty close to, to just winning that way. Yeah, that's the thing that Sam has to be worried about now. Ben Kettle's at 13. Sam Black at 15, thanks to that scavenging news. And he can continue gaining life with that scavenging news for a little while longer. Here's another brainstorm, though. Probably love to see like a force of will here or something, huh? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what he's looking for to close out this game. Doesn't find one, however. Did find a Green Sun Zenith. And a Brainstorm, so he has a shuffle effect with the Green Sun Zenith and a Brainstorm as well to try to see some new cards. He's got True Name Nemesis in his hand, so if he would find a Force of Will, he'd have something to pitch to it potentially. Sam's going to use this Wasteland to take down a Bayou here. That's actually pretty important. It puts Ben even further away from casting it does. that Crater Hoof Behemoth. He's got five, six mana now. That would have been the eighth mana, I think. Mm -hmm. All right, Sam Black's going to use his scavenging news to take out another creature from the yard. Things are moving along, plodding along here, but Sam Black is slowly moving towards his, uh, his, his end game. He has a Knight of the Reliquary in hand as well. And he's going to just play the true name Nemesis. Ben Kettle checking to see who Sam Black is going to name for the <laughs> true name nemesis. Uh, I think that's a pretty easy choice. Sam, Me, right? Yes, yeah, Sam figured it out. <laughs> you can name, it has to be a player. Can you just name any person? I, I named George. <laughs> I don't Washington. think it says name a human being, no. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. So let's see if Sam can close out this game. Ben sitting at seven life. Very close, just a couple attacks away. Because Solly Primate run off the top for Sam. The brainstorm finds the land, land, the land. Crack that fetch land, shuffle away the lands, and... We've been seeing this all weekend. This is a, a legacy staple play for sure. Okay, here we go. Another brainstorm for Sam Black. This is a post-shuffle brainstorm. He sees a true name nemesis, a land, and is that a zenith? What is that? Well, something he's Some, going to put back. Something he doesn't want anyway. <laughs> now, Kettle's not actually dead here, right? No, no. He's at seven life. The max it seems Sam can deal is... Uh, Five with, with double exalted trigger here, because like Pride Major Noble Hierarch. Yeah, that's exactly what he's gonna do. No chump blocks here. Well he can't chump block. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm saying Sam's like, you're not not allowed. And Ben sits at one life after cracking that fetch land. He needs to come up with something on this turn. And it needs to be a kill. He doesn't have a, any way to deal with that many yeah, creatures well, and stuff, right? Dryad Arbor is a good start. It'll give him four creatures. He can play his Gaius Cradle, get four mana, five, six, seven, and eight. Gives him Crater of Behemoth, 
for plus five, plus five to his two remaining creatures. That's something. So what is that? 5, 10, 15, 17, 18, 23. Can he steal it here? Are there 10 points worth of toughness on the other side of the table? 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's exactly 10. Wow. So if there's a creature in the graveyard... Oh, there's an 11th with the yes. Dryad Arbor. Uh -huh. So I think that Ben is just one life point short, one point of power short. Ben so fires it off here. He's doing some math here. Well, yeah, I think he's doing the math that you were just doing, Ben. Unfortunately, that Wirewood Symbiote is not going to do very much. He's first going to Green Sun Zenith. He's green Zenithing for one to get a Heritage Druid. Okay. So he's got five creatures. That just sets him, you know, a little further, well, yeah, a little further behind. <laughs> He's going to tap that Gaia's Cradle for five, tap three of his elves, get eight, cast Crater Hearth Behemoth. All of his creatures will get plus six, plus six. So that's 18 plus seven is 25. I think that might do it. He's going to untap his Deathrite Shaman. Is this enough? Wow. Sam Black's looking at his hand. This looks to be lethal. Wow, from nowhere. Is Ben going to take this game? There's four creatures attacking. They all have plus six, plus six. Sam's doing his due diligence damage. here, counting out his toughness. Wow. wow. And Ben Kettle steals a game there. I didn't see the Green Sun Zenith. He, he drew it on that last turn. He right? must have. He must have. So Ben Kettle goes up a game, shaking his head. Sam Black, well, Did he looks how it. Sam Black always looks. <laughs> yeah, ready to go get another vegetarian meal. <laughs> Sam's a vegetarian. Okay. On our, back on our back table, you get a look at uh, Owen, and here's Sam Black. He's the 10th ranked player in the top 25 pro rankings. Gold pro. He just top eighted a pro tour. Mm -hmm. Pro the tour Theros, pro tour. He, he got third, yeah. He also top eighted pro tour Philadelphia. Known as being one of the premier deck builders in the game today. So what do you think that these players are thinking looking at the sideboards of their decks? Let's take a look at them. Well, Kettle's got quite a few options here out of the board. He's got six discard spells at his disposal if he feels like those are what he wants. Uh, he's got three Abrupt Decays to deal with any problem permanents like Umazawa's Jitte. He's also got an Harmonic Sliver which he can Green Sun Zenith for, or just cast to take care of things like Jitte and Batter Skull. And then he's got a Gaddock Teague if he, wants, if he wants it as well for things like Jace the Mind Sculptor and opposing Green Sun Zeniths. Sam Black and his board, really the only cards that stick out to me are Ether Sworn Canonist. It's quite good against the Elves deck, stops it from playing multiple spells in a turn. Uh huh. There's a second Umazawa's Jite that he can play. Uh -huh. An Envelop, the, the blue spell, costs one blue mana. Counter target sorcery spell is really good against Glimpse of Nature. And uh, Humility, he might, he might want to throw in there, although it might be a little too slow. Okay. Have you seen Matt Wall today? Sam Envelop seems quite good. Yeah, Envelop is. It, oh, it, it also gets. It gets Green, green Sun, Sun Zenith, Zenith and. Glimpse natural of Order. And Natural Order, yeah. So it hits like all the spells basically that. Uh, Ben Kettle wants to play. And any of the 
hand disruption spells, Cabal Therapy, and Thoughtseize that, that he might board into. Get a look at the feature match area with all the players on the sides watching. Again, on our, on our back tables, on our back table there, you see Owen Churtonwall playing for, for top eight. And he's playing against, uh, what was his name? You remembered it. Wayne, right? Yeah, Wayne Palamine. Yeah, Paul, Wayne Palamine, who's playing the, uh, we, we, we had a fun match with him earlier in the day. He's playing the um, Metalworker deck. Yep. He played against Andrew Cunio. Had, the a, had a couple round. of minor missteps in there, and it cost him big. Yeah. But he's still in contention. Still in the thick of it. Well, it's not guaranteed that the winner of both of these matches will advance to the top eight here. It seems very, very likely. Looking at the standings, the number of players with two losses or better went down all the way to 18th place, so it's really close to the edge of who's going to make it in, who's not going to make it in. Now, now take a look at the top there. Who is going to make it in? Wesco, Craig, Craig Wesco, and Drew Tunison should be able to draw this round. Okay. Andrew Cuneo, win or lose this round, he's going to have to play against his opponent, Jared Butcher. We'll make it in. Jared needs a win over Cuneo to make it in. Okay. And then on our third table is the other feature match, Owen Turtenwald versus Wayne Palamine. Both of those players sitting with two losses. Winner of that will almost assuredly make it in because the, of their tiebreakers. And then it goes all the way through table eight, or table nine. We're watching table eight, Sam Black versus Ben Kettle. Table nine are the last two players with two losses. The ones with the worst tiebreakers, Glenn McEwen and Jason Ford. Jason, we watched last round. But since the tournament is 1700, over 1,700 people, all players with X and two better or better records will get an invitation to the following Pro Tour. Okay. So even if, for example, Ben Kettle wins this match and gets a uh, heartbreaking ninth place, he will be invited to the next Pro Tour. Mm. Um, Sam Black did bring in humility. I saw it in his opener there. Okay. Which it looks like he's kept. He's also got a force of will there in the front. Uh, Ben Kettle has shipped his hand back, so he's going to be going down to six. He's going to be on the draw here. You <laughs> figure that's fine. Up one game here. Yeah, he really took that one. From, snapped it, snatched it from the jaws of victory. He, he sure did. I like the Wirewood symbiote interaction there. Yeah. Owen has won his match over Wayne Palamine two to zero. Wow. Meaning that almost assuredly we'll see the former 2011 Player of the Year in the top eight of this event. It's his second back-to-back -back Washington DC Grand Prix top eight. Right. The last one he lost in the finals to Brad Nelson back in I believe 2010. 10 or 11, yeah. 2010. That was a standard tournament. He was playing Jund. Brad was playing Blue White Control. Brad beat him in the finals, but Brad not here this weekend. Couldn't make it out. Mm -hmm. So is this going to be Owen Turtenwald's tournament? It could be. It absolutely could be. He's playing a deck that he loves, that he put a lot of work in, tuning it. You can read about his articles. He's his last two articles were about this deck. He knows it inside and out, and it's showing here as uh, he's put himself in prime position for top eight. Not guaranteed, but pretty close. Let's see what Ben Kettle, yeah, Ben Kettle keeps. All right, so we're underway here. Sam Black up against it. He's got to win back-to-back -back games to, to try to make it into the top eight here. Ben Kettle just has to sneak one of these victories away from Sam to put himself in position for top eight. Let's see if Sam can do it. It's all the pressures on him here. Noble Hierarch, turn one for Sam Black. Got to be happy about that. Yeah, it allows him to accelerate to that humility in his hand extra quickly allows him for a turn, turn to true name nemesis if he so chooses. He also has Force of Will as protection and, ooh, an Ether Sworn Cannonist in his hand. That's going to be big if he can get that out early. Really disrupt Ben's early game, his early combo. Finhorn Elves for Ben Kettle. The Elves deck often starts pretty <laughs> inauspiciously. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, sure. 
So do you think that, I think that Sam's going to play the Aethershorn Cannonist here. Okay. As opposed to the true name Nemesis. Slow down Ben at least for a single turn, forcing him to deal with the pesky 2-2, allowing Sam to get another turn to cast something like Humility, but he's just going to pass the turn back. Is that a Vendillion click in his hand that he's going to use? Yeah. It is. All right, so he's going to draw step Vendillion click his opponent, targeting him. Abrupt Decay. That'll be one he, he'll be glad to get out of his hand. Also a Korean Ranger and a Wirewood Symbiote and some lands here. So it's going to be interesting to see what Sam takes. Uh, the ab Abrupt Decay is something that can be used to, to kill an Aetherswan Cannonist, for example. So if, that, if Sam plans lie there, then he'd want to take that. But if he's worried about any type of shenanigans in the future, then he, he can take out one of the combo enablers here for yeah. Ben Kettle. There Sam's, it is, Decay Sam's down. Sam's take the, the Abrupt Decay here. It doesn't seem like it's possible for Ben to win on this turn. Right. There's no Glimpse of Nature, and there's some risk involved with putting the Abrupt Decay on the bottom and, and having Ben draw into the Glimpse. Uh-huh. But, but he doesn't. Yeah, Ben's only real chance, like, Ben's not going to drop his whole hand here. He hopes to combo at some point. So Sam has this big opening now to play Aether's Run Cannonist. He knows it's going to be safe at least for a couple turns. He's holding back Force of Will in case there's like a Viridian Shaman or a Green Sun Zenith for three. And now he's got this awesome attacker, this 4-1 Four while, while attacking. Yeah. Five turn clock for Sam Black, the, the number 10 ranked player. And there it is. Aethersworn Cannonist has to turn back. Aethersworn Cannonist is a, a popular card to use against combo decks. It says that players can't play more than one spell per turn unless it's an artifact. Yep. So Ben Kettle currently is going to be stuck playing one single spell per turn, which blanks some cards in his deck, right? I mean, Glimpse of Nature doesn't do anything yeah. at that point. And, and Sam, with, with that Force of Will, or the, the pair of Force of Wills, really just puts him in a great position here. Especially considering that he has a clock here, right? I mean, yeah, that's the yeah. key. Like, hitting him for four every turn is going to add up really, really quickly as we move forward in this game. And he's going to be able to lean on those Force of Wills really hard. He can, unfortunately for, for Sam, he's still a mana away from actually being able to hard cast the Force of Wills, and he's going to have to exile the other one as he doesn't have a blue card if it comes sure. to that. But, you know, with the board state the way it sits, he's looking in such good position. Is he going to go for a Zenith here? He is for two. So let's see what he gets. And there it is again, scavenging ooze. Ben Kettle down to 10 life. Sam Black looking to be in the driver's seat again, though I have to say he looked like he was in the driver's seat in game one and yeah. got rushed by a Crater Hoof Behemoth at the last possible second, so... Is this what Ben's trying to do this time around, too? He's fetching out a Dried Arbor. If he can find a Gaia's Cradle and, and or something like a Natural Order, he's got a chance. We know that Sam's got that Force of Will in hand, so it's going to be a little tougher for the Elves player to do that again this game. Another land for Ben Kettle. And he has to just pass the turn back. So Sam Black, loving that. Take Wait, out Dryad ooh. Arbor with your wasteland with my wasteland. Yeah, I'm not gonna let that happen again. He doesn't want to play the humility out of his hand because he has such a quick clock in the air that he has no incentive to do that. It also turns off his Ether Sworn Cannonist, so indeed. Natural Order was drawn by Ben. That would it have been was. a perfect draw step. I mean, it still kind of is if if Sam didn't have that Force of Will. Yes, that's the problem here. Because, man, that if you're sitting in Ben Kettle's seat, you've got to be real happy to see that, yeah. that card come off the top. Yeah, so Ben's going to go for it here, but either Sworn Candace means he can't cast two spells in this turn. That's right. So all that was for not. No, and Sam Black actually reminded him 
just pointed at his cannonist and says, you've already played one spell for the turn. Sam Black can breathe a sigh of relief because once Ben Kettle plays the uh, Quarian Ranger, he knows that nothing yeah. can happen after that. All right, get a look at, look at them. Sam Black evens it up here. One game apiece going the last and deciding game here in round 15 of Grand Prix Washington, D.C. Once again, Sam Black, the same expression. He's a cool character at the table for sure. He took a pretty tough loss in the first game, and he looked exactly like that. Yeah. <laughs> now he picks up a decisive victory and, uh, and feels the same. You notice that um, our back table's done. For those of you that are just coming back in, we had Owen Turtenwald back there. He won 2-0 in his match, so he is in really good position to make it into the top eight and join Craig Wesco, who's already in, and Andrew Caneo, who's also going to be in the top eight as well. Drew Tunison looks like he's in two. Those are the only slots that we have uh, that we're pretty sure about. There is a ton of uh, players on 36. Let's take a look at our upcoming webcast schedule here for the next month or two. Grand Prix Albuquerque, standard, November 23rd and 24th. Next weekend. That's right, followed by Grand Prix Vienna, which is also standard on, the December, on uh, November 30th to December 1st. Grand Prix Dallas, Fort Worth, once again standard. Everybody loves that. December 7th and 8th, and uh, leading into the new year, Grand Prix Prague is modern, January 10th and 12th. The uh, Vienna and Prague are going to be covered by a European coverage team. Awesome stuff. I, I love to watch them whenever I'm uh, not doing a GP the same weekend. It's great because uh, get back from dinner and they're on. Yes. The, the I time always stay up late too, so <laughs> yeah, it works out fine. Good and bad. Yeah. Bad is I never get to sleep on the weekends, but <laughs> good is I get to watch Magic all the time. It's true. All right. So this is going to be it. This is going to be our last match of the Swiss portion. And this is going to decide who gets to go into the top eight. Ben Kettle taking a moment to himself there. It looks like he's meditating or something. All right. Here we go. A lot of pressure here this, for these two this players. This is for the top eight as far as either of them are concerned. It's also for qualifying for the Pro Tour for, for Ben Kettle. We know Sam, you know, being he's a pro is, yep. is qualified. Top eight in the last Pro Tour is qualified. But Ben, I mean, it's like a PTQ Finals at the very, very least. A lot more pressure than that because it's GP top eight is on the line. A lot of cash. That's right. A lot of fame. Okay, well, play has started. Looks like a quick fetch land for Ben Kettle. He's going to grab a basic forest this time. He doesn't want to get wastelanded anymore. Ooh, and that one of envelop is in Sandblack's hand. It could be quite strong. Let's see what Ben Kettle kicks things off with here, though. Korean Ranger. Ooh, and there is the... Uh, the Wasteland that we mentioned before. Oh, but the Wasteland just found a target. Guy's Cradle. Yeah, okay, well, maybe we're gonna have a... Sam's is Envelop gonna just counter this? It, it, it just has, has to, to, right? He has okay. to. No. So Sam's gonna wait and, and hope to sort supply shares the right creature at the right time? Okay, well, Ben. Ben is thinking about what land he wants to play. He decides on the Misty Rainforest instead of the guy's cradle. Problem here is that Ben doesn't really have any mana producing owls, so his, his hope here, I guess, is to... Is he just going to kind of cycle this? You know what I mean? Just like maybe get a card or two off of it and move on? Yeah, I mean, he's got the Heritage Druid, but he doesn't have a third elf. Played his land for the turn. Quirion Ranger can't untap something of note. So Heritage Druid gets cast. That will draw Ben a card. And then Ben attacks him with the Quirion Ranger. That's probably why Sam didn't envelop it. He thought, you know, what's the worst that can happen here? Yeah. He's got one mana at his disposal, no mana elf.
Sam calmly goes to his turn. Sam plays a tropical island and says go. He has humility in his hand here as well. Still has a sword to plowshares. Still has a pair of wastelands. And Elvish Visionary for Ben Kettle. Triggers on the stack, but it's actually Elvish Visionary that's on the stack. All right. Trigger resolves. So that means the Heritage Druid is now online as well. Okay. And here we go. Make three mana, play a Wirewood Symbiote. Now this is where the Swords of Plowshares is going to have to hit either one of the Elves that Sam cares about or the Symbiote itself. Yeah, and, and by the time Sam can use the Swords of Plowshares on the Symbiote, it will have already done its damage. So Sam's going to take out the Elvish Visionary. Right. That's what Ben was going to bounce in order to draw some more cards. Right. That is one of its key draw engines is the, the two-card combo there, and uh, Sam was going to interrupt that immediately. So Ben has three mana floating and a green sun zenith in hand. And he just says go. Yeah, he doesn't want to get another visionary. Interesting. Keep the combo going. Sam Black looks like he wants to wasteland Gaia's Cradle before things get out of hand here. Cradle down. Yeah. And Sam passes the turn back with both of his mana available. No third land, or yeah, there was a third land drop, the wasteland for, mm -hmm. for Sam, but not getting any closer to, to casting the humility. But really interesting that, that A, Ben played that Gaze Cradle naked mm -hmm. on that previous turn, and, and B, he didn't want to try to go off a little further with the Green Sun Zenith. Maybe his hope is to Green Sun Zenith for Craterhoof Behemoth but he's quite a ways away from that. I mean, that made more sense when the Cradle was still on the battlefield, but right. now it's gone. That plan seems less viable. Sam, though, doesn't really have too much of a clock. He doesn't have any clock at all. Green Sun Zenith for Ben Kettle. Is he going to envelop this? Yeah, he is. Yeah, you have to envelop there. And now Ben doesn't have anything else in his hand, but he does have... A couple of creatures, a couple of small elves. Yeah, that's not mana the right there. He's, he's attacking with them. Sam could not have untapped more quickly. Draws a true name nemesis. And he's going to play Storm, Stoneforge Mystic and go grab an Umazaz Jite. Wow. All I'm right. sure if the, there was a face cam, you'd see this gigantic smile on Sam Black's face. I mean, this Actually, is... Actually, on second thought, Sam Black... No, not keeps, on Sam. <laughs> keeps such good composure. Yeah, but still, th this really was the big turning point, right? Once, once he gets attacked by those three elves, Sam knows, okay, it is time for me to press my advantage and try to clean up this board here. Ben Kettle's sitting on two lands in hand. That's it. Sam doesn't know that, but he can certainly assume that he's in a good spot here. And if he can get that Umazawa's Jitte down and equipped, it could end this game really quickly. And humility. And humility is going to be played here. Now, how does this play out from here generally? Well, because humility is one of those weird cards that affects the board in ways we're not used to for magic. Basically, Ben doesn't have a way to get rid of it. Okay. But he has three creatures, and Sam Black only has one. Does the Jitte just take over? Like, what happens? Yeah, the Jitte is going to... Well, Jitte will be really good to begin with, because either Ben is going to block Sam's creature, mm -hmm. and then Sam can get rid of all of Ben's creatures with Jitte, or doesn't block, and Sam gets another activation of the Jitte. Okay. So... Like we saw before, the Jitte is the, the key card here. And ben. ben Kettle has completely dumped his whole hand on the table, including a Nettle Sentinel. He does have Sam Black down to 10 as well. Oh. <laughs> that was awesome. Sam Black just equipped humility to his Stoneforge Mystic. <laughs> yeah. So but uh, he, just, he just meant to do it the other way. So Jitte is going to start taking out creatures. Sam's got the Dryad Arbor to re-equip on the following turn. And it seems like Ben, even though he's able to 
continue getting creatures out. It's I think that the time is getting close in the round, which is why you see the players playing so quickly. But I think there's a source of plowshares to just take out anything and equip the Dryad Arbor, which is, of course, just a 1-1 one -one like everything else. Attack, take down both Heritage Druids, and Sam Black looks to be in great position here. Swords to Plowshare is your query and Ranger, since everything's the same anyway, and the humility's not going anywhere. No creatures, no lands, or sorry, no cards in hand. Sam just quickly untapping, bashing with Chite, needs to deal 18 damage before the round ends. He does, but it adds up really quickly once you get the counters going. He's going to play a 1-1 one -one with no abilities for three mana this time. Yep, true name <laughs> Nemesis. It, the card formerly known as true name ne Nemesis, now it's just a... A humble version. You can see the player's pace has quickened significantly. Not only have the decisions become easier since Pen Kettle is hellbent, but also um, the clock is running. And they and they need to make sure that they finish the the this game in a timely fashion. Thought sees for Ben Kettle. <laughs> okay. Sure. You got no cards in hand, so takes brainstorm away. No cards matter anymore. They're all the same now on Ben Kettle's deck. Search up a 1-1, one, one, play a 1-1. One, one. Sam's able to attack for six each turn. Ponder. Ponder, keep, find another Brainstorm. Attack for two, pump, pump. Six, yeah. Going to drop him down to eight here, get a couple of more counters back on that Jitte, pass a turn back. That's going to do it. Sam Black improves to 13-2 and two here at the GP and puts himself in a prime position for top eight. Should be in.